you need to measure what matters. Um, gosh, I, you know, I, I hate to say it, but you know, on Monday, my kids didn't run very well because, um, in football PE, they, they did one rep max squats, you know, and I'm like, why, why are you doing one rep max squats? Like people I know, they don't, they don't do that. You know, like, so not everything that we can measure, it should be measured. Um, I went, when I ran a weight room, we did, we did keep track of improvement and everything, but there was nothing that wasn't, was less than five reps. You know, I think if you can do it for five reps, you probably have to do it with good form and, and you're probably not overloading yourself and getting hurt and all those terrible things. So, um, measure what matters. So what do we measure? Well, in speed days, everybody thinks we only do like fly tens. That's, you know, like feed the cats. It's so stupid. You know, all they do is fly tens, you know, Hey, you know, last I checked, you had to run at least hundred meters in a track meet. Okay. Haters going to hate. Yeah. We do 10 yard flies. We do 10 meter flies. We do 20 yard competition flies. When we're outside, we do curved runs. I mean like half of what you do is the sprinters on curve. We'll do 35 meters on a curve. Why 35? 35 meters on the curve is the spacing of hurdles. The 300 meter hurdles are 35 meters apart. So we have, we don't have to measure anything. Um, one of the reasons why we like 20 yards and, and 10 yards is because men's hurdles in the 110s are 10 yards apart. So we don't have to measure anything. Yeah, even though it's a metric track, the men's hurdle marks are 10 yards apart. Uh, we do a 40-yard fly. And we think we think the 40-yard fly is probably the most, I mean, if a guy is, the best guy at the 40-yard fly is your best guy. I mean, I, I just think there's, there's no way to cheat the 40-yard fly because it's such a longer sprint. So it's really important, but we don't like to do like, we never do three of those. We may be, we may do two tens and a 40, um, but we love the 40 yard fly. By the way, the guy, the fastest guy in the 40 yard fly is going to be the fastest guy in the 10. The fastest guy in the 10 is going to be the fastest guy in the 35 meters on the curve. Speed is speed. Um, we do only one acceleration thing. We used to do like a 30 meter dash and call that acceleration. We've never done a 10, ever, ever, ever. I think if you start measuring the first 10 meters or 10 yards out of the blocks, guys are going to rush their acceleration. They're not going to push like they're supposed to in a meet. They're not going to have long, strong steps. So what we do is we put the free lap cones at the first and second hurdle mark. That means the the start cone is at 15 yards. The finish cone cones at 25. So we come out of the blocks or maybe we don't come out of the blocks. Maybe just three point stance or just a leaning start, whatever you want to do. And we will go 15 into a 10. But I think my guys do those long and strong pushes because they're not being timed in that first 15. So that's what we do with Excel. Um, and then we do two different sprints. The 40 yards obviously has the great connection to football. So we do 40 yard dash. I think in my first 10 years of Feed the Cats, I was timing 100, no, 10,000, yeah, 10,000 40 yard dashes a year from like 1999 until we got our first timing system. And that was around 2012. Uh, or maybe no, is, is, no, is it 2008? So around eight or nine, 10 years, uh, all we ever did was 40s with a stopwatch. I would average their best two. We'd run three, average their best two 40 yard dashes. And we had ter terrific success during that time period. Um, I love the flies because you can change them to miles per hour. And I think miles per hour is a just gamifies our training so much and kids relate to it. We also do the 55 meter dash. That is our indoor meets are either 55 meters or 60. They're usually 60. Uh, we can't run a 60 on our track because it's too small. 178 meters around. It's not a full size college track. 
So the the longest sprint that we can run indoors on a straight is 55 meters. So we do that about once a week and we like it. So for anybody that thinks we only do the really short things, I mean, they're, all these are short, but, but we like a lot of different metrics. We like, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight metrics here. That means each guy has eight personal records, eight lifetime records. And every time we run one, kids get to break their record in practice. Now it doesn't happen very often because we run fast every day, but it gives us eight different chances. So why would we just do one thing? I think you really need to work at gamifying training. Now, quickly, what that means to me is make, make your practice more like a game. We, we, we didn't go out for a sport because of practice. We went out to play in the games. And for some reason, practice has been hijacked by, by coaches who made practices miserable and not game-like. And that's why guys, you know, didn't like practice. So we need to break practice more like the game. But I also think when you think about making it game-like, Things like competitions, things like measurements, record, rank, and publish, all those things is kind of like keeping score at practice. And it's more fun. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, like as a basketball player, I loved it when we did clock situations in practice. You know, when, when they, you know, like, hey, we're down five with uh, 60 seconds to go. One minute to go, we're down five. And, you know, we practice game situations. Man, that was the best part of practice ever. So we just need to constantly be thinking about making practice more fun, more game-like, um, keeping score, uh, measuring what matters, all those things. And I think it it takes a lot of work to make like a football practice more game-like, but man, you need to try. One of the things that really makes it game-like for us is we hand out these wristbands 20 miles an hour, 21, 22, 23. This is obviously for a pretty good track program at a fairly big school. We have like 2,300 kids in our school. Um, and we have a pretty good track team. So, you know, last year we were really young. We only had two guys that could run 23. Uh, the year we got third in the state a few years ago, I, I think we had five. You know, you give me five or six guys that run 23 miles an hour, we're going to be hard to beat. Oh, my God, we're going to be hard to beat. We're going to have jumpers. We're going to have hurdlers. We're going to have great relays. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if I'm coaching girls, you probably subtract three here. If I had girls at a similar size school, I'd go 17, 18, 19, 20. You know, whatever boys do, it's minus three. If you're running on turf and without track spikes, it's probably minus one. Uh, you have probably, you know, people understand that, you know, hardly anybody in an NFL game ever breaks 22. And, but the fact is, those guys could break 24 or 25. You know, if, if you're Tyreek Hill or DK Metcalf, you can probably run 25 miles an hour spiked up on a track. That's what you have to do to be able to run 22 in a game. On soft turf, 12 pounds of pads, semi-fatigue. So, when people say you do not have 23 mile an hour athletes because DK Metcalf can't even, that person knows nothing about speed whatsoever. Uh, we run on a hard track. Uh, we run with spikes on. And yes, we have high school kids every year that can run 23. <laughs>